Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Epoxy and here in this video I'll be showing you how to get better FPS in Fallout 4 using something called Shadow Boost and this can actually make a pretty good impact on your FPS in those demanding but short range areas where for some reason it's giving you lower FPS even though you should be rendering technically less and less shadow. So essentially what this will do is make it so that your shadows will dynamically change depending on your FPS impact and how badly the shadows are affecting that FPS. So anyways, I'm going to be showing you guys a baseline scene here at which my FPS kind of drops a little. And right now you can see that I'm at solid 62 FPS. I have my NVIDIA inspector set at 62 FPS. Well, actually 60 FPS for Fallout 4. For some reason it goes to 62, but that's not really that big of a deal. As you can see, it's locked right at 62 FPS. If I move around, it's not going to drop whatsoever. However, if I look behind me, we can see that my FPS will drop to about 53 FPS and stick at around 54, 55, 53. And that's a pretty decent drop. And if we look up here, we can even see that it drops to as low as 49-ish FPS, which is kind of dramatic. So we can see that it stays around about 49, 50 here. And that's what we're going to use as our baseline. So 62 and about 50 as an average. So as you can see, as soon as I look back, this is rendering fine. It's rendering at the capped 62 FPS. So anyways, Let's see how much Shadow Boost can actually affect our FPS when we look in the other direction once we have it installed. So anyways, it's actually a pretty simple installation. You'll want to go ahead and go to this Nexus page that will be linked in the description below. And once you're here, you're going to want to go ahead and go to this link right here. Download latest binaries. Just click that. And we want to go ahead and click the download. And we can go ahead and save it right to our desktop, your downloads, wherever you want to save it. So anyways, once we minimize this, we can then extract with either 7-zip or WinRAR, whatever you have, extract it into a brand new folder. We can go ahead and open up that folder and then open up the bin folder. Once we have the bin folder opened up, we can go ahead and go into our follow forward directory. We can go to this by simply going to Steam, going Properties, going Local Files, and browse local files and it's simple as that we can then close steam off and we can see that we have both of these open here you're simply going to want to drag all three of these files right into where your fallout executables are and your fallout default those files is where you're going to want to drop these files so simply just copy and paste you can cut them whatever you want to do just simply copy and paste and once you have them in there that's basically all you have to do to install Shadow Boost. However, there are a few settings I suggest changing, currently set at a little bit of unreasonable settings. So anyways, what we want to do is set our target frame rate to about a FPS lower from what our locked FPS is. So I'm just going to put this at about 58 FPS as my target frame rate. If it's hitting that, I'm totally fine. It's not a big deal. If you want, you can even put it down a little bit lower, say like 50 FPS, if you're fine with 50 FPS and you want it to drop as little shadows as possible, or if you want to put it to about 55, I'm going to keep mine at about 58. Now something I suggest doing next is changing the minimum shadow draw distance to about 3000. It's at default at 2000, but I can find that in a lot of scenes, that's just way too short, and there's going to be a lot of odd looking scenarios if you have it set at 2000 but if you set it to 3000 that's kind of a good balance of performance when you're getting those low fps drops but it's also good enough to the point in which you won't dramatically notice the fact that there's missing shadows all over the place now something else i suggest doing is changing the maximum to about 9000 and the reason for this is just so that it doesn't have to dramatically change back and forth from 3000 to 15000 that's a dramatic change and if it's doing that dynamically all the time and trying to go in between those two numbers now i suggest just keeping the change speed where it is i see the speed as perfectly fine if you want to set it as a little bit faster or even a little bit slower so it has a little bit more fade it's totally up to you we can see that it says the safe range is about 0.5 to 5.0 so it's totally up to you where you want to keep that i suggest just keeping it at the default so once you've got all these settings to where you think you like them you can then save it and then close that off and we can go ahead and just double check that it saved the settings and then we can go ahead and launch our game and see what kind of performance impact it made so let's go ahead and launch our game click play and let's see where we stand as an fps when we look at the core vega assembly plan 
Alright, so as you can see here, I'm still getting about the 60 FPS cap. Keep in mind my Nvidia Inspector is set at a 60 FPS cap, so it will sometimes give me a higher FPS than that. So it gave me 62 last time, but it's giving me 61 as a cap right now. But I'm hitting the cap and it's not dropping whatsoever, even if I look around like a crazy person. But if we go ahead and look behind us, it's still going to give us a little bit of a drop, as we can see. But then it's going to bring us back up to 60 FPS, which is just an insane difference. Because before we, we were dropping down to as low as 49, we can see if we quickly look around, it's going to drop around to 58. But then it's going to bring us right back up to 60. And we can still see all the amazing, beautiful looking ultra shadows that we have set here. And there's no big deal whatsoever. And there's just really no graphical change whatsoever, even if you're in a pretty impactful scene. And the difference between 49 or 50 FPS and 60 FPS is pretty noticeable, especially if you're dropping in between those two numbers over and over again very rapidly. It can get very annoying. So this is definitely a must have fix for me. And it just fixes so many problems, so many FPS problems that are just really unneeded. So honestly, when I'm looking at this scene, I should not be getting lower FPS than when, say, I look over here. So how it basically does this is it dynamically changes the distance of your shadows. So say if I look over here and then I quickly look over here, the shadows will disappear from those far away trees as it's completely unneeded. So that is a pretty simple fix on how to get better FPS. We can see that we got a 10 FPS impact just from doing this alone. And I'm sure some people might even see higher impacting FPS than that. Or you may see a little bit less depending on your game's performance as a baseline and just overall your computer's configuration. So anyways, hopefully this video did help you get some FPS increase at least a little bit within Fallout 4. Now keep in mind that this won't be making any impact if you haven't done the VSync disable fix. If you have not done that, stuff like this isn't really going to change your FPS as it's still VSync greatly impacting your FPS. If you guys want me to make a video on how to disable VSync, but also keep your game locked at about 60 FPS, let me know down in the comments section below, and I will make a video on that, showing you how to go upon taking those steps. And trust me, it can get you dramatic FPS increase. For example, when I was doing this testing beforehand, and I forgot to do the VSync disable, I was getting about 30 FPS or even lower staring at this scene right here. But as soon as I di disabled VSync, it locked my FPS at 60. As soon as I did that, I went from the low 30, even lower than that. I jumped all the way up to about those 49, 50 FPS that you saw during this video. And that's just a massive increase in FPS just from simply disabling something that has absolutely no graphical impact whatsoever and has nothing to do with your game's graphics, just locking your FPS. So anyways, once again, hopefully this video did help some of you out. If it did, please smack that like button down below and subscribe to join the good fight. If you haven't already, it would be super greatly appreciated. In addition, check out TriggerBomb.com, the beautiful forum website for all Bethesda fans. There's even a section to talk to Mr. Matty Plays, Fudge Muppet, myself, and more if that's also something you're interested in. So anyways, until next time, this is Epoxy, signing off.